Welcome to this session on Bill of Materials, part of Module 5 in Operations Management. We will be discussing about what Bill of Materials is, the different ways in which Bill of Materials are represented and also we will take an example and see how the Bill of Materials is analyzed, that is how the requirements of components can be made from a Bill of Materials. What is Bill of Materials? Bill of Materials is a listing of all components that include sub-assemblies and materials that go into an assembled item. It includes the part numbers and quantity required in one of our previous sessions that Bill of Materials is a listing of all components. That is, it will include sub-assemblies as well as materials that will get go into an assembled item. You have an assembled item which when broken down into different components will have a relationship in terms of levels that is each component that goes into the parent item will be required specifically in a certain quantity. So if I have to make an estimation of how much subcomponents or components are required so that the listing of this entire parent item when it is made will give me a detailed information about the subcomponents as well as the quantity required per assembly that is bill of materials. So the bill of materials will also include the part numbers, so the component numbers as well as the quantity required per assembly. So this is important per assembly, for one assembly or one assembled items the list of all components that go into one unit of the assembled item. Common ways of depicting apparent component relationships on hierarchical basis are, so there are different ways in which bill of materials can be represented. Some of the most common ways of depicting these relationships are, one is the product structure tree where the relationship is done in the form of a tree with branches. Second, in the form of an indent or an indented bill of materials and third as a single level bill of material that is a single level at a single level all the components are listed together and then the list is made. So these are the three different types or different ways of representing the relationship between the parent item, the assembled item and the assembly that is the components. First one is the product structure tree, the product structure tree, second one is the indented BOM or the indented bill of materials and third one is the single level bill of materials. Knowledge of this dependency structure reveals clearly and immediately what components are needed for each higher level assembly. So the knowledge of this dependency structure reveals clearly and immediately what components are needed for each higher level assembly. So this dependency structure will very clearly and immediately tell you what are the different components that are required for each higher level assembly. Now this is the bill of materials which we are talking about. So this bill of materials, a product structure tree is shown here. The assembled component is this bracket. It is given or labeled as Z100, Z100, Z100. So at zero level, this first thing is the component. We can see here the level of the assembled item is always zero. Level zero here refers to the parent. So zero is always associated. Level zero is always associated with the parent item, which is the bracket. So we are now or breaking down this bracket into different components. So you can see here every one unit of this bracket will have a base and spring one unit of base so every bracket will have one unit of base and two units of spring 
one unit of base and two units of spring so every one component or a one unit of bracket is made up of one base and two springs you can see here this is labeled as a10 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 level 1 first component 0 a10 and this is b11 so you can see here this all this what goes in this particular line column will be 0 you can see here this is all 1 correct all 1 here so what you want so this z100 or z100 rather you can call it as z100 is a bracket a10 is the base at level 1 and spring 2 in number so in brackets the numbers which are written in the brackets here indicate the number of components required per unit of the parent item so here this bracket requires two units of springs that is one unit of bracket one assembled item of bracket requires two units of springs whereas where nothing is written it means only one unit so this bracket requires one unit of base two units of spring and four units of clamp four units of clamp correct four units of clamp correct now this base this base again is divided into different subcomponents this is a subcomponent to this now this becomes a subcomponent to this so for this this becomes a parent now this becomes a parent this this becomes a parent to this this becomes the parent to this this is the primary parent and these are all becomes the secondary this becomes the parents to the so what is a subcomponent this is a subcomponent to this but it itself is a parent to this one correct so here this base every one unit of base requires one unit of clamp and two units of housing every one unit of base requires one unit of clamp and two units of housing because this is connected to this correct similarly one clamp this clamp requires one handle you can see here also these are the same clamp this coding is given here not to confuse you don't get confused is this clamp different from this clamp no, because you can see here the label is same C20, C20, C20. So these two clamps are the same. Similarly, this handle is E330. This handle is also E30. So these both are same handles, not different. That is why this is given. This labeling is given. This particular product number is given. Correct. So if you have to now establish how many units of brackets are required, how many units of brackets are required how many units of brackets are required you have to now look at this bill of materials and then analyze the problem then analyze the problem correct now if i say if i want 10 units of the bracket z100 in 10 numbers i want z100 in 10 numbers now accordingly based on this bill of materials the requirement for all these subcomponents will also change will also be will have to be taken care of will have to be taken care of correct because for one unit whatever is shown here is for one unit whatever is shown here is for one unit correct now this is what you have to find out now now if i say these bearings now two bearings for one unit of housing two units of bearing are required correct and one unit of shaft correct so whatever is written in brackets here reflect the individual units of that particular component so this is the product structure tree these are the levels this is level 0 this is level 1 this is level 2 and level 3 so when you have to make an estimation of how much is required for the how much components are required you have to go from bottom to top for example, if I were to find out how many handles are required of this handle, for every clamp I require one handle. So here one, one, correct, one. Now for every base, one clamp, every base, one clamp. So again one handle and for every bracket, for every bracket, one base. So for one bracket, you require one base, one clamp on this level but there is one more clamp here so you have to evaluate that also correct you have to evaluate this also here so if i am taking talking about handle now one handle here one handle so all the parents here are only one so one one 
so here it's one i will just so handle one handle is required here handle i'm talking about handle now one handle here so handle one number here one handle because every one clamp requires one handle here. every base here requires one clamp so one but here also same handle is there for every one clamp you require one handle but there are four clamps here so it will be four into one four into one four into one so that will be four it will be four handle four handles required here here one handle here four handles four handles here four handles here now why because one handle for one clamp so four clamps four handles and this clamp for one bracket four clamps so four so total number of handles required is what is the total number of handles required total number of handles required will be total number of handles required will be this one this one plus this four so one plus four one plus four is Five. five. One plus four is five. One plus four is five. So that will be five. Five. Correct. That will be five. Five units. Similarly, if you take clamp. Similarly, if you take clamp. See, here one clamp is required. So clamp one here. Clamp is one. Clamp. Clamp one here. Here four clamps. Four clamps are required. Four clamps are required for every one bracket. Four clamps are required. So again, clamp total number of clamps required will be total number of clamps required will be again five. So total number of clamps required is five. Total number of clamps required is five for every one unit. For every one unit of bracket. So if I say I require hundred brackets, then the number of clamps required will be for hundred brackets. You just multiply. This with hundred, it will be five hundred. If I say hundred brackets are required, it will be five hundred clam clamps that are that are required. Five hundred, five hundred. Correct. Similarly, handles five hundred, five hundred handles. So now we are estimating for one bracket. So only one thousand brackets. So C into one thousand. So for one bracket, five Cs are required. So one thousand brackets. 1000 into 5. Let's shoot from the next slide. Let us go. This is the product structure tree. The advantages of this is there is a very clear relationship, definition of clear relationship here. Plus, looking at this product structure, you will know at which level each subcomponent lies. The relationship with the parent item. Now, let us go to the intended, the intended bill of material. This is the another form. Same problem. Same description is given in the form of an indented bill of materials. The part number is given. The description is given. The number number here is quantity. This is the quantity. Whatever is given here is the quantity required. The quantity as given there. C24 numbers and the levels where they lie. This is slightly confusing. So uh, most people at the shop floor they would prefer a structured tree, product structured tree. Personally, I also feel the product structured tree will. Give you the complete information about the levels and the different requirements. So, indeed, this is another form. But sometimes, what happens is some pro some production planning experts they would recommend this indented bill of materials because you can document it in the right form. These things, how many each at a particular level, you can see here. C20 occurs twice. There is no confusion here. C20 twi twice it's written. One at level two, another one is at, both are at level two only. Both are at level two only. Similarly, handle also, handle both are at level three only. So this is the indented bill of material, similar to your product structure tree. It's the same problem, same numericals. Third one is, is again determining VOM panel. This is a what I showed you in the how you calculate the dependency effect. So A one A per Z. So the requirement is A B spring two Bs per Z two. This is the calculation. How to calculate your Bill of materials. How to calculate your bill of material? You can just go through this. This is how we what we have done there in the previous slide. In the product structure tree, we found out no how much. See, we got C five. No, what is the total requirement? C we got at five. E also we got as five. The same calculation here is shown. The detailed description. This is for one unit. One unit of Z. 
this is for one unit of z this calculation is for one unit of z one unit of z now if there are multiple units of z you have to multiply that number with this so this is for one unit of z one unit of z z100 one unit of z100 so this 100 is not a quantity here it is a label that is given to this particular now if i say 100 units of z then a will be 1 into 100 100 units of a are required 200 units of b 500 units of c 200 units of d 500 units of e 400 units of f and 200 units of g so this is how you calculate the requirement of bill of materials okay. so for 100 units of z multiply these individual requirements with 100 if 1000 units of z are demanded 1000 into 1 2000 units of z 2000 into 1 so on so on the application of bill of materials one more way of representing single level is single level bill of material similar to your indented form so this is how your single level of bill of material is taken okay. it is simple same and just go through it all these are from a uh, standard textbook that is prescribed operations management by joseph monks it's a good book or right? good book that you can make use of So once you look at this particular table, which gives you a single level bill of material, you can see all the three representations have their own advantages and disadvantages. One is product structure tree very clearly gives you the relationships on a hierarchical basis, right? whereas the indented form is more useful for filing or refer or preparing chart, etc. The single level bill of materials eliminates confusion now. See, here for every end for Z 100 A, B, C, three components. This is very clearly gives you for every component which is a parent. I told you one of the com A10 is a child here or a component here to this parent Z 100. But it also becomes a parent because there are subcomponents of that. So this single level BOM now is a very good representation to show you the roles that each component plays. So A10 here is a component. Here A10 is a parent. C20 here is a component, here also it is component, but it also has a subcomponent. So that now becomes a parent and its component is E30. So this is again another <coughs> advantage of single level BOM. So each one has its own advantage. So it's up to the production personnel or the materials management personnel to select which particular format of bill of materials they want to exercise and use. Hope this session of BOM is helpful to you, please work out the different uh, uh, points which you have discussed so far in materials management and bill of materials and uh, understand how these terms are beneficial for the materials management process which are very important integral function of operations management. Thank you.